Hello again everyone, I'm Barry Tatum and this is the first of a series of shows where we will feature our Wilson County Commissioners. On this episode we'll talk with two commissioners, Sarah Patton who is in her third term and a first timer, Mike Kurtz. We will find out why they threw their hat into the ring and what issues they think are of most importance for our fast growing county. I'm Barry Tatum, now let's get to talking. Commissioner Sarah Patton, thank you for joining us on Talking with Tatum. Well, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. Well, you know, what we're trying to do here is uh, you serve an important role in local government as a county commissioner, but uh, to give our viewers an opportunity to learn a little bit more about you and about your district. So uh, uh, if you would, just start off, tell us where you grew up, where you were born, anything about your family, and, mm -hmm. and uh, what are your ties to Wilson County? Well, actually, I was born in Murfreesboro, and uh, when I was born, my parents lived in Wilson County, uh, right there at the corner of St. John's Road uh, on Catesville Pike. And so throughout my childhood, the biggest part of it, I've lived on the border of Rutherford and Wilson County, or the border of Cannon and Wilson County. Uh, I graduated from Auburn Town High School uh, in 1970-ish, and with a <laughs> class of 14, one of them being my husband, of 41 years and um, we have three children uh, our oldest Josh who works for Lock and Bar and our daughter Amanda who's an EMT and our son uh, Matthew who is a who works for Drive Time and is also a, a a cowboy he loves ranching and and horses and all that kind of stuff and we've lived on Statesville Main Street uh, for 31 years, uh, since 1991, for over 30 years. So your roots run pretty deep in the county. Absolutely. And the rural areas of Wilson County. Well, uh, that's what I was getting ready to ask. You represent District 9. Yes, I do. And uh, District 9 is unique compared oh. to the other uh, 25 districts in, in several ways, but what's the biggest one you want to tell us Well, I guess about? the biggest one is it's the largest geographical area of Wilson County. Uh, we border Cannon, DeKalb, Rutherford, Smith counties uh, and all of my constituents I can't go door to door unless I drive or go buggy you know and uh, and I love talking to the constituents of District 9 I love to go door to door and I just love to talk to people and I just I love being a commissioner actually I do I wasn't always sure of, that I would like it but I do well when uh, you got out of high school mm -hmm. got married started a family what did you do uh, for a career because uh, being a county commissioner is not a way to support yeah. yourself oh absolutely family. absolutely well when I graduated from high school I went to Cumberland and uh, I graduated from Cumberland in 1977 and after that, Toshiba had just come into Wilson County. Right. And that was a decent paying, a fairly decent paying uh, factory job. And I worked there for about 14 years. And all three of our children were uh, born while I worked there, you know. And so, and one day I looked around and I thought, I just don't want to spend the rest of my life in this factory. And I do have an education. I'm a reasonably, reasonably intelligent person. So uh, a good dear friend of mine uh, and I, worked some at quality care and my parents had also been nurses and caregivers and so we applied to the Lebanon Wilson County Vocational Center so I'm all about you know continue continuing education and adults doing that as well as high school students and we uh, were accepted in a class of 12 to uh, be in the uh, LPN uh, LPN program, licensed nursing program mm -hmm. and I spent 11 months in the nursing program uh, and it was, it was as close as we've ever come to being divorced, I do believe, because it was a 40 hour a week thing and you spent the remainder of the week studying and we had three kids at home. I was about to say, <laughs> you, you've got a full time job raising a wow. family. Wow, and I worked double shifts on the weekends at the nursing home, okay. you know, for the experience and everything. So my husband was great through that. He's always been a big supporter. And uh, so if it hadn't been for him, never would have made it. <laughs> well, you know, that's the secret of a great relationship is Absolutely. being able to work together through the not only the good times, mm. but times mm -hmm. where it is a struggle. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, but so you graduated from the uh, program with your LPN uh -huh. and, and uh, have you spent a number of years in the health? Well, program? I have been, I've been a nurse since 1991. I've gone back to school at MTSU and various things. I only like a couple credits having my RN, but in the things that I do, I've just never really, you know, completed that because I've stayed so busy 
you know, being the nurse that I am. I still work three days a week, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays as a nurse. And the majority of my patients uh, have various uh, uh, difficulties, like they may be on a ventilator at home and they may have feeding tubes and catheters and, and you know, various tubes and everything and machines. Or they, you know, they may, they, they just need extra help at home right. being able to survive and get around. So it's home health care. It is, it's private home. duty is what it's called. Okay. And, uh, but it's not just somebody that's uh, aged, it's somebody that oh, has no, an enhanced no, no. level of care. Uh, a lot of my patients have been pediatric patients. So dealing with uh, children. Trachs and, and yes, and, and you know, there's, there's a lot of intense things that are, people don't realize what is involved in people who have various difficulties at home. Did you ever, I know your husband's retired now, um, finally after a long two career. Weeks. But, uh, <laughs> That's right. but uh, have you ever considered uh, slowing down and trying to retire? No, I guess I'll just one day just pass on out, you know, and <laughs> because I'm one of those people, I'm, I'm a multitasker. And uh, it seems like when you want something done, you get a busy person to do it. Right. And uh, I enjoy helping people and trying to solve problems. And well, that kind of gets us into the oh, into no. the public service mm -hmm. aspect. It sure does. One of the things about being in health in healthcare or anything in the medical field is you have a genuine desire to try to help. Absolutely. Folks. And um, what was your motivation for? Well, first of all, tell us. Uh, you've had several terms before. You're in which term? Now? I'm in my third term right uh, now. Yes, sir. So you've been on the county commission about nine years. Yes, sir. Yes, and uh, uh, what prompted you way back when, nine years ago, to say, I think I want to try to uh, be a county commissioner? What was, uh, what well, prompted I think you to do that? Probably the final deciding factor was the flood of 2010. Okay. Because, uh, you know, we, we were out there in the edge of Wilson County and we had no help, no support. Uh, we would call and they'd say, well, you've got all, you know, you're in line, you know, we've just got... Take a number. Or, take a number, take a number. But you know, when you're on the end of that, you think, well, hey, I'm just as entitled as everybody else. You pay the same tax I pay rate. the taxes, I deserve the same amount of services. And of course, for years we've always said, well, we don't seem to be getting anything for our taxes, most of the people out there. And I'm, I've always been a big person about wanting people to uh, stand up for what they need to stand up for. Right. But you know, sometimes when you say things to people enough, and you say, look, you can change this. You know, it's all about you. And nobody wants to be the one that steps up and does it first. So the change is gonna start with you. And I tried to get somebody else to run for commissioner. I actually approached my husband and, and got the petition in his name and he said, no way, <laughs> I will not do this. So went back, got it in my, in my name and uh, cause, because several people had approached me about it. We had started a volunteer fire department in Statesville because we had no fire service. Right. Most of the people in the area didn't have county water. And, you know, we didn't, didn't and had no aspects of getting it. And uh, so that was one of the things, there was like a bucket list of things that we needed in our area, the schools, you know, we needed new schools because we'd had them so long and they were just getting overcrowded and falling down. Right. Well, you mentioned a couple of things there. Uh, in the last nine years, there's a fire station out in Statesville. Absolutely. Station, and uh, not to mention the one over in No Rain, which is a joy. Yes, sir. Community. We're so proud of that. But then you've got the new Watertown High School, which oh. I think is actually the newest high school yes, as sir. we sit here today in the county. Yes, sir. We are so proud of our Watertown High School. That was just such a blessing. because And our kids have the state of the art uh, things just like everybody else, you know, and, and it's just such a pride for them, you know, they, they feel so, they're so grateful to have that opportunity because sometimes you feel like a stepchild, you know, when you, when you get the last of everything. Right. And our roads are, are much better. We've had a lot of cooperation, but come to find out, excuse me one second, I've had a little issue with my, with my throat lately, with the sinuses Absolutely. and everything. Absolutely. A lot of the issues could be solved just by talking to people. You know, if you know the avenues to go down and know who specifically to talk to and to start the things rolling and everything. And the, the road commission was, you know, very open to, you know, doing whatever we, we needed, you know, when as long as we follow the guidelines, you know. And then the school system, they, you know, when approached and we were able to get the, the high school, it just takes people communicating with each other and willing to work with each other.
in, in, in having the knowledge about who to talk who to. Who to talk to. And you know, and, and, and I am a nurse. I had no idea going into commission because all I did was say, okay, I guess I'm gonna be the guinea pig, you know. <laughs> and every day, every day is a learning experience. And if you think you know everything, you're in the wrong place if you're in politics because the Every day it's different, you know. You've got to you've got to follow the the guidelines that the county, the state, the country has set down. And the issues change, because and they when, change rapidly. Because when you came on, uh, the economy was nowhere near as good. We didn't, absolutely we didn't have the the rate of growth that we've got going right now. Oh my right goodness! Uh, in the time come in the time we have left. Uh, what would you like to say or, or see as future issues that county government, local government are going to have to deal with and any ideas or thoughts about uh, what our county commission, local elected officials should be focused on or, or some improvements you'd like to see? Well, I would really like to see more proactive. Uh, before I came on to the commission, there wasn't, a, it didn't appear to be a lot of proactive endeavors. And since I've been there, we have built more schools and our roads are better. Uh, and, you know, it's just a progression of things, but you've got to pre be proactive for all the growth we're getting. I mean, they're coming, yes, Mount Juliet is, you know, <laughs> my opinion, at its max. Right. Lebanon is really getting there. And then you're going to be on, in, in Copenhagen on my territory, and I'm getting it from both ends, from Rutherford County right. and then from Lebanon. Now, some people don't foresee that so much as, as we do who live there. You know, but we see it every day, and we know how how they're encroaching in and where those boundaries are. But when you're used to seeing houses up beside each other, and and then you're then all of a sudden when you live where I do, and they're not next door to each other, they're not knocking at each other's door, but you can see them two miles and then a mile. You know, you see how much that growth is. See a lot more lights at night. Oh my goodness! Hear a lot more dogs barking, a lot more cars going by. But I would just really like, wish and hope that the future Wilson County Commissioners, that all of them could work together because it takes 13 people to get anything done in, in County Commission. If you don't have 13 votes out of 25, you don't get anything done. And it takes everybody working together. And, and when, you can, when you see that progress and that progression where your officials can work together, you feel like, they're working for the good of the people. Of course, I'm not up there as, uh, as much as you are with the county commission meetings, but one of the things I've noted in the last few years is you may go to a, a committee meeting, oh. and, and, uh, and it may be a committee that you're on and you're expected to be there, but I've seen you a lot of times at committees that you're not on just trying to educate yourself. Absolutely. That's the important part of it. You have to educate yourself to, to how the process works. I've be, I have been to more community meetings. My husband was like, I thought this was just like a, you know, a few hours a, a month job. And I said, oh, well, I want to know what's going on. I want to know how everything works. Because you can't get anything done. I do my own research. I listen to both sides of the story. Mm -hmm. And then I come to my own conclusion. But now I will. I have many times I will call my constituents and ask them their feelings about it. Because they may not feel the same way I do. They put me up there. I need to consider what they're, what they're saying as well. So their opinion may not necessarily be the same as mine, but I always try to make a good, well-formed decision. A decision. And it's, it's important that, that your vote is counted and I feel like that I'm their vote and I want their vote counted. So I have yet to miss but one commission meeting in nine years and that was unavoidable because something of a rescheduling thing. I actually had my doctor dismiss me from the hospital one Monday night so I could be at my commission meeting because I was in the hospital for vertigo and I couldn't drive my husband. What took me and that's the only commission meeting he's ever sat through and he said, I don't know why in the world you do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you for joining us here. And we'll thank your husband as well when he watches this for, uh, for his sacrifice as well. Thank you so much for joining and thank you for your hard work for the well, people out there in District 9. I appreciate you too. Thank you. Thank you.